uh, from Kolkata. I am a teacher of Patanjali Yoga Sutras, and today we will be looking at what are the nine mental disturbances and how can we remove these nine mental disturbances. Patanjali is giving a very powerful suggestion in his Yoga Sutras. He says, if you are submitting to the law, if you are surrendering yourself completely to Ishwara, if you are going in Ishwara Pranidhan, that is complete commitment and bhakti to Ishwara, then something phenomenal happens. Number one, the yogi's consciousness rises and rises in such a way that the illnesses of the body, the diseases of the body start going away. When you are a believer of Ishwara, a firm, staunch uh, bhakt of Ishwara, devotee of Ishwara, you surrender to him, then just not the diseases of the body, but also the mental health issues, they start disappearing. The yogi here, in fact, starts getting a vision of his own self. His own self is pure consciousness. So with Ishwara Pranidhana, with surrender to the Ishwar, when he starts seeing vision of his own pure consciousness, his mind undergoes a change, his mind undergoes a transformation and his mind undergoes a tremendous repair work. All that was not working starts working in the right order. All the mental networks, the neural connections which had difficulties start getting repaired. Why? Because the yogi is focusing, is seeing the vision of pure consciousness. He is seeing his pure mind and a perfect mind. And that is where he starts the repair work of his inner connections, of his inner mental networks, of his inner neurons. And as they start getting repaired, he finds surprisingly the diseases of his body start disappearing. He finds the psychological well-being starts happening to him. And this is because Ishwara is considered to be a pure sattvic entity. And uh, in fact, he is more than sattvic. He is the purest of the pure. So automatically, the mind of the yogi becomes pure. And as the mind of the yogi becomes pure, as the mind of the yogi starts leaving tamas and rajas behind, starts purifying the tamas and rajas in the body and in the mind, the illnesses start disappearing. A yogi now becomes very pure, very peaceful, independent, and free from change. He acquires these qualities. So, what does purity mean here? Purity means he moves on to a state where he slowly becomes free from the cycle of birth and death. What does peaceful mean? The yogi now moves to a state where the obstacles which are present deep down in him, right from birth, the kleshas, they start dwindling in power. So in him, the obstacles to yoga of ignorance, ego, attachment, aversion, and clinging to life, they start disappearing. And when we say he becomes independent, that means he becomes independent of virtue and vice. He becomes independent, free from dharma and adharma. 
now automatically because of this he gets freedom from change he becomes freedom he gets freedom from the consequences of karma because he is free from dharma he becomes automatically free from karma now he is not bound by birth duration of his life and the quality of his life happening in a particular manner we know that when we take a rebirth it is dependent on our past karmic account at the time of our death but when we do ishvara pranidhana when we go into that surrender that bhakti that sharnagati then not only it does the body and mind heal itself but other benefits start accruing a pure life peaceful life independent life and a life which is free from change so the question is when we focus when we think when we concentrate when we meditate when we do samadhi on the ishvara on the absolute self the largest of the largest self then we find we also start acquiring those kind of properties if you remember i had earlier shared with you gautam buddha's famous quote i become what i think so when you start thinking of ishvara when you focus on ishvara when you meditate on ishvara ishvara does not have a diseased body ishvara does not have mental afflictions mental distractions ishvara does not have a consciousness which is low ishvara has an absolutely supremely pure consciousness so we also start graduating and moving in that direction our body becomes healthy our mind becomes stable pure and we find that our consciousness keeps on rising higher and higher so what we need to do is we need to meditate on ishvara and we will find all obstacles of our life will disappear we will find the true self by the grace of ishvara will come and start showing itself to us we will get visions of our own purusha our own atma our own true self our soul so this is very very important when you focus on ishvara you find that it suddenly lights up the lamp of the self who suddenly lights up the lamp of pure consciousness in the world of prakriti for us and we are able to see our true self very very clear now the question is what mental disturbances what mental distractions can be removed by this method of ishvara pranidhana by this method of focusing our mind on the highest so there are nine such mental distractions these nine are not called obstacles they are distractions they just move your mind left and right so the obstacle word is kept is referred for the concept of kleshas kleshas are the very core of issues which we face right from birth which block our progress on the yogic path but these distractions are there at a minor level they keep on coming and going they move they are not fixed they are not stationary they are not that bothersome but they are there and they can distract us on the journey of meditation they can distract us on the journey of concentration therefore uh, patanjali has mentioned them here so he says with ishvara pranidhana these distractions get removed and uh, it is just not ishvara pranidhana even if you try to bring your mind at one place even when you try to bring your mind even when you try to bring your mind on any object on any good aspiration you have on your breathing or on uh, uh, some divine 
a guru or some celestial being in the night time, you will find your mind getting stability. You will find your mind reaching a peaceful state. And in that peaceful state, in that serenity, the distractions go away. What Patanjali is suggesting here is to focus on the chanting of Om. He says when you are chanting Om, when you are focusing on Ishvara, because Om represents Ishvara, you are bringing your mind to one point. You are becoming one-pointed. And it is all about one-pointedness that can transform lives to the highest level possible. It is all about one-pointedness which can make you a superhuman being amongst ordinary human beings. It is all about one-pointedness which can give you the best of bodies and the best of minds. So that is the importance of what is achievable by uh, one-pointedness and Ishvara is one of the methods. Om chanting is one of the methods. Any meditation on any object, focusing on the breath, focusing on something which you like, focusing on a pleasant sensation, feeling. These are all methods, tools, supports to which you can stabilize the mind, bring it to one place, one point, and all the distractions move away, go away. And you move further on the path of yoga. You move further on the path to yogic self-realization. So now let's take a look at what are these nine disturbances which Patanjali has spoken about. So the first one is disease, which I referred to in the initial portion of my talk. This is the disease of the body. So the disease of the body goes away. Idleness, doubt, carelessness, sloth, lack of detachment, misapprehension, failure to attain a base for concentration, instability. These are some of the distractions which actually happen. The Sanskrit terms which have been used by Patanjali are Vyadi, Sthyana, Samsara, Pramadha, Alasya, Avirati, Bhranti, Bhranti Darshan, Alabdha, Bhumi Katva, Anavasti Tatvani, Vikshet, things like this. So let us look slightly more closely at what these mental distractions, mental disturbances, which get removed just by surrender to Ishwara. As I said, first the body becomes free from diseases. So a healing takes place. You see all the diseases of the body. In fact, modern science says the majority of the body diseases today are psychosomatic. They are connected to the mind. So when one is able to bring the mind to one place, you are automatically forcing the other parts of your mind to defocus from whatever it is focusing on. So this intentional defocusing of other areas of the mind is removing the errors, is removing the wrong networking in the mental circuitry which has happened and things begin to fall in place. The mind stabilizes, the mind corrects itself, and we find these diseases of the body, of the mind, moving away from us. So first one is the disease of the body which goes. Second is idleness. What is idleness? Idleness means the disinclination of the mind towards work. Mind is not willing to work. So that disinclination goes away. Mind gets some power of action. There is some rajas which comes in and which helps. Then the third distraction, disturbance is doubt. Now doubt happens when we are in two minds, when we are thinking whether to do or not to do, whether it is right or it is not right, whether it is doable or it is not doable. So that becomes a doubt. In connection with yoga, we can say 
it is the practice of yoga doable or not if the practice of yoga is doable or not is something on which we are unable to take a decision then this becomes a doubt in us coming to the next one is carelessness carelessness is referred to in yoga when we are practicing the eight limbs the ashtanga yoga and we miss out on one of the angas then you are careless about the procedure that procedure needs to be rectified so this is uh, this uh, carelessness gets healed up with ishvara pranidhana let's say somebody is practicing ashtanga and is not doing pranayam or is not doing the asana then by focusing on ishvara by bringing a mind to a concentrated state one pointedness he realizes and he develops the inclination to sit for asana he develops the inclination to sit for pranayama and those practices which are missing out also start happening sloth sloth is alasya alasya means simple laziness it is a lack of effort in mind and body and it happens due to heaviness in the body due to inertia lethargy in the body so this too gets removed this too gets reduced uh, some of us have a lack of detachment lack of detachment would mean over attachment we are obsessed with certain things in life this could be because of mental greed this could be because of extra attachment of the mind to certain sense objects so this also gets balanced out this also gets reduced bhanti darshan that is getting uh or rather considering mistaken knowledge as right knowledge so this also needs to be removed and uh, with ishwara with ishwara pranidhana with bringing the mind on to om chanting this also goes away so as we see by just by bringing the mind to one place it rectifies number of uh, issues which we are facing it sorts out number of mental health problems for us the next one is inability to concentrate some of us cannot concentrate our mind is all over the place it it is at 100 places at the same time so once when you start the practice of ishwara pranidhana when you become a devotee of ishwara this is a very sublime way of bringing the mind to one place to one pointedness to bhakti and this helps in increasing the concentration ability so dear friends uh, we see that uh, all of these disturbances are actually happening because of tamas and rajas for those who do not know what is tamas and what is rajas tamas is essentially the element the quality of form in prakriti in nature it is connected to the property of inertia to the property of uh, heaviness the property of color shape size so when we are picking up certain tamasic qualities certain slothful uh, laziness oriented qualities then we find our mind gets lethargic gets stuck up at one place does not move is not agile is not alert and that creates some disturbances in the mind for us on the path of yoga at the same time rajas rajas is another element or quality of nature in rajas the mind is constantly moving changing jumping so here again concentration is not possible the mind might be at 100 places at the same point of time or the mind might be in doubt it is not sticking to one option it is not taking a decision it is moving from option 1 to option 2 and back to option 1 it is oscillating between the two options and not taking a call so when we remove tamas and rajas then we find our mind becomes satvik satvik means pure peaceful independent 
and full of light, full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of uh, ability to decide, full of willpower. And that is the kind of mind we need. So just by the simple process of uh, Om chanting and Ishwara Pranidhana, surrender to the Lord, uh, Patanjali says that you get all of these benefits. Uh, moving further, these benefits or rather these disturbances are called Antaraya. And Shankara explains, Aya is moving and Antar means a gap. So they create a gap in one's yogic practice, yogic sadhana. They keep the yogi away from the path at times. Therefore, it is advised that these antarayas, these nine distractions are done away with. And Ishwara, devotion to Ishwara is suggested to be one of the easiest and the best methods. Now, these nine mental distractions by themselves, they cause some further disturbances in the mind. So let us look at what are these disturbances. They are suffering, rejection, trembling, inhalation, and exhalation. So these issues accompany the antarayas, the distractions or the disturbances of the mind, the nine ones which we referred to earlier. So these are called secondary disturbances. They happen because of the first one. And here uh, they have been referred to in some detail individually by the expert commentators. So they say that uh, the first one, which is uh, a suffering or dukkha, it essentially happens because of three reasons. Uh, Kapil Muni also refers to it in his Sankhya or Sutras. Uh, what it basically says is all dukkha, all suffering, all pain has three reasons, three causes. The first one is internal. It happens inside of us because of what happens in our inner mind. Our inner mind, the chitta in yogic language is made up of three tattvas, three elements. And these are the buddhi, the man, and the ahankara. These three together constitute the inner mind. And they become the cause of suffering at times. So at times while we are perfectly happy, uh, suddenly a thought comes to us from inside us, and then we become unhappy. So one of the reasons of Dukkha is from the mind inside us. The other reason of Dukkha comes from the outer world through other people or you can say through other animal forms or in another simple terms through natural activities outside. Could be a flood, could be uh, something as simple as uh, a heavy wind. So, uh, people outside, animals outside, and natural disturbances outside also lead to dukkha, also lead to suffering. The third uh, reason is again outside, but it is beyond us. Uh, it could be something like because of supernatural reasons. Mm, you can say for understanding purpose, Pitra dosh, graha dosh, uh, curses of the devtas, some impact of the rakshasas uh, in our earlier lives. So these are difficult to understand. They are unexplainable and we do not have a control over them. So these constitute the third cause, the third form of the God. And through yogic practice, the purpose of yoga is to alleviate this suffering and to come to a state where we experience a state of absolute freedom from all sorts of pain, suffering and dukkha. And on a sure shot way, 
so that it works 100% for all the people who practice it. So Kapil Muni, when he talks about it in his Sankhya Darshan, he says, he says the Vedic methods, the Vedic rituals which were used in his time to alleviate sorrow, used to work in some conditions for some people and in others it was not able to perform satisfactorily. So he started the process of inquiry to find what can give us 100% success in the removal of sorrow. And what Kapil Muni has suggested in his Sankhya, Sankhya Sutras, in his Sankhya philosophy, is what Patanjali also supports in the Yoga Sutras. There they say, if you understand and uh, realize that you are a pure conscious entity and you are neither the mind nor the body combination. Once you understand this, once you are able to isolate yourself from the mind-body-matter creation, then all suffering goes away, all pain, all dukkha goes away. So the purpose of yoga is to make us realize that. And this is what Patanjali does in his fourth chapter, in the chapter of Kevalya, in the chapter of Moksha, where we can gain freedom from the mind and from the world of matter. We are liberated from being attached to them, from being integrated with them. Uh, another uh, uh, disturbance which happens is dejection. Dejection is when our expectations are not met, when our desires are obstructed. So this dejects us, this puts us in a lower mood, in a lower level. And dejection may happen because of the nine earlier distractions we discussed. Breathing issues. Breathing issues connected to inhalation and exhalation can happen. They can happen because we know that the breath is connected to the mind. So if there is some instability in the mind, it can lead to certain unevenness, instability in our breathing patterns. It can disturb the inhalation, the natural inhalation. It can disturb the exhalation, the natural exhalation which we have. So uh, this again is a distraction which happens from the mind, uh, which is caused by the nine earlier distractions we discussed. And uh, the last one here is trembling. Now, trembling is an activity which comes because of uh, uh, nervous instability. So when the mind is not stable, when there are issues with the mind, when there are distractions, happening in the wild, when the mental networks are not working properly, when the brain might get disbalanced, then the nervous system which runs the body can get disbalanced. And this leads to trembling in the body. So, as we saw, the first nine disturbances mentioned in the earlier sutra, uh, they disrupt the practice of yoga and they produce a further set of four disruptions. So these nine plus four, 13, are the maximum level of disruptions which happen as stated by Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras. And because of all this, we experience pain and dejection. So ultimately, Patanjali says, when you do Ishwara Pranidhana, when you do Om Chanting, then you not only remove the disturbances of the body and the mind, the diseases of the body, you not only sort out the mental health issues, you also raise your inner consciousness. You start getting a vision of the real self. Then you can start focusing on the real self. And that is when the internal journey of spiritual growth happens and that is when you start reaching the higher and higher states of you. So dear friends, this is all for today. I thank you for uh, listening 
being a part of this journey. Uh, the objective of these lectures is to ensure that you are able to experience permanent happiness. And once you understand the yogic methods to experience permanent happiness, you are able to impart it to your family members, to members of your society, to members who form the population of your country and to the people of this world at large. So that is the purpose, that is the objective. We would like all people on this planet to be permanently happy and we would like to leave behind for our children, children and the coming generations a very, very happy and blissful world. So thank you for listening. It shows you are a good soul. You are on this path. May you achieve all your spiritual desires and may Ishwara be your guide as he is the Adi Guru. He is the source of all knowledge and he can take you wherever you want to go in life. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you tomorrow with another further topic on this yogic path to spiritual growth and to mental permanent happiness. Thank you.